Hi, my name is Heather Richmond. Welcome to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well and you guys are taking care of yourselves. So I just wanted to take a few moments and read the information from a fairly lengthy Patreon post that I created um, a couple of days ago and provide any commentary or clarification on that if, if called to do so as I'm reading. Um, this is a topic that I've spoken about in the past here on YouTube, and I've written about extensively on my Patreon page. Um, the link to that, if you're interested, is in the description box, and many of my posts are public, um, so you don't even have to, you know, necessarily subscribe to my, to my page. Um, and also I've shared some of this information to a more limited extent on my Facebook page and Instagram as well. So um, this information is about the, what we might call the, the promise. Um, and this is the process that Neville Goddard and Aluna Ash speak about um, in great detail as the um, the final transfiguration and fusion process of a soul. So this is typically going to be those souls who are in their, their last physical incarnation, um, on this plane of existence and, um, who undergo this, this process that unfolds automatically because, um, at a soul level prior to incarnation, we each as individual consciousness, um, created this blueprint for our, our path back to ourselves, to our higher consciousness, to fusion with God. And so, um, you know, not everyone is supposed to go through this process at this particular segment in time, uh, in this particular incarnation. It, it has to, to happen one by one because we all, it's, it's like this very complex, um, puzzle. We all call in one another to play parts for us as we, go through this process. And some of those parts are, our shadow, you know, we, they present as shadows to us to give us more of a sense of what we do not want. And then other times that manifest as, you know, pure love to help encourage us on the path. So I share this information because, not because I, I seek to quote unquote wake people up or any of that. Um, this is a process that is more, um, I don't want to say, I, I guess just more intense and more, um, you know, uh, it's, it's a higher, of a higher consciousness than, um, awakening. It is so awakening may be a process that takes place over, you know, two or three lifetimes or multiple lifetimes. But this, the, the transfiguration and fusion process is, um, something that comes in the last days in, you know, at the, the end of a, a soul's physical incarnation, um, but we, we are all individual consciousness and we do not lose that as we fuse back with our, our true selves. So it really is just a, a truly magical unfolding that takes place. And as I'll talk about, um, as I read this first quote from scripture, um, it's a, the desire for an experience of God truly becomes all consuming and there is no amount of money. There's no material possession or even, you know, other people or experiences that can, um, you know, put you off the path. Um, you, you might do things that can either 
speed up the process and make it easier or that can potentially delay the process. Um, but again, it, it has all been encoded automatically prior to incarnation to, to automatically unfold. So no one can fail. Um, you know, this is, um, it's a, it's a guaranteed process of, of reconnection with our, our divine true natures. And so I'll go ahead and read, um, read the post and then as needed, uh, as I feel called to, I'll stop and clarify anything or provide some commentary. So this first quote is again from scripture. Um, when you begin to undergo this process, there is a completely new, um, way to read the Bible. The Bible becomes, it's, it's like a textbook essentially for, um, transfiguration and fusion and so much information that has been deeply encoded and of course misinterpreted and misconstrued, it becomes seen in a, in a new light. All right. <clears throat> the days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine upon the land not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. Amos chapter 8 verses 11 and 12. And so um, that last sentence there, people will stagger from sea to sea, wander from north to east. Um, they will search for the, the word of the Lord. This is referring to those who are still searching on the external reality, in their external reality, without. Um, and they will not find it there because the word of the Lord is truly contained within us as individuals. And so um, next, this is a short quote from Neville Goddard. The mystery begins to unfold in you. Until you actually experience it, you do not know how wonderful scripture really is. Man must experience scripture before he, he can begin to understand how altogether wonderful it is. It's eternally true from beginning to end. The whole thing is true. It is not secular history. It is divine history. So, I share with you what I know from experience. I am not theorizing. I am not speculating. It happened to me, a simple man, as you are simple. And I did not for one moment suspect that this was the mystery until it actually unfolded with me and I experienced it. So I share that because um, I, I obviously resonate with that very deeply. Um, as I've discussed before, I've never been, um, you know, a particularly spiritual person. Uh, I've not been religious. Uh, you know, this whole process again has unfolded for me very automatically. And I know that, um, if I can truly transform my life, in um, the ways of learning manifestation, learning to master my emotions and my thoughts, then truly anyone can. Um, so it's, it's a, again, it's a very interesting and, and magical experience. So the rest of this is the information that I wrote. He does indeed come as a thief in the night. It does not happen in one night alone, and far from stealing something from you, he steals you away to the salvation which you, as your true self, planned so long ago. The resurfacing of the knowledge that you are the creator, 
your I am presence. It happens to all in humanity, one by one. As we play parts for one another, we are not all destined to wake up at the same time. We each encourage one another to and through the process of transfiguration and fusion. Some are playing the part of your dark shadows to show you what contraction of consciousness looks like, while others will help lead you in by love. As you move through the process, the need for hard-won lessons diminishes and finally ceases altogether. That may not mean that no negative things ever happen to you, but when they do, you understand that you are the operant power, and you have the power to change any state that is undesired and make it into your own image. So this really is about um, rising above duality. Um, you know, it's coming to a, a place within your your mind and your heart where you truly see no enemies because you understand that everything in your reality is simply a reflection of what is transpiring within you. And so if there are any enemies that you have or any darkness, you know, dark entities or dark people in your reality. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. You know, we all go through these experiences. Um, but it's that, you know, it's a matter of adjusting your perception. And truly, we all have control over this. Um, and it's a learned, it's a learned process, or, or maybe I should say it's a, it's a remembered process. But, um, you know, once memory begins to return, it, it, you know, you no longer see duality. So I will continue. There is a pattern for transfiguration and fusion that plays out for each individual consciousness. Only the details and the timing varies. It is not some abstract, ambiguous idea. It is intensely personalized and takes shape in your cubic reality. So I want to emphasize that. Um, it is a, it's a truly personal experience that happens to you involving actual other people or what appears to be others, um, involving other people, involving concrete, you know, physical reality. Um, an initial seed of awakening is planted, perhaps in childhood or young adulthood. Decades later, there's a blooming and harvesting of that seed. Then, over the course of 1260 days, which is 42 months, a number of great import in the Bible, there's an unfolding of a series of events that are specific to the individual, but that follow the same overall pattern. The end times does not refer to an external collective event. This includes the resurrection and awakening within the tomb, which is the skull of man, the birth from above, the appearance of David, the splitting of the temple, and the descent of the dove. And I could make a, an entire video on any one of these processes, and perhaps I will at some point. Um, but if you want to know more information about that, I would really recommend checking out um, most of Neville Goddard, Goddard's work. He, um, in, in those pieces, he refers to this process, um, but there's one specifically that lays it out called 1260 Days. 12, 12, 60 days. So I would recommend checking that, that one out. Um, and it gives much more information about these processes in depth. Alongside each step in this process, soul memory returns incrementally. It would be impossible for the human mind and body to tolerate these events instantaneously. But in time, all is transformed in your reality 
and every person becomes perfect in your sight. When this begins to happen, you may feel compelled to share your experiences, not for the purpose of waking up others. You will know exactly why this is a futile endeavor. They will not be able to hear you but rather for the purpose of, for, of providing comfort and encouragement for those who are undergoing this process in this same segment of time. Everything is changed in your being and your view of the world, so it is incredibly helpful to read about or hear the experiences that others have had or are having. Thus far, I've found only two others that write and speak about this. Luna Ash and Neville Goddard, but I'm sure that there are many more. Not all are sent to share in this way. Some communicate their stories through thought forms as a beacon of light or a signal for others. There is, in many ways, a true famine that comes over you. There is nothing in this world that can satisfy the desire for the word of God and the experience except the experiences themselves. Others may stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord without, in an external sense, but they will not find it by looking anywhere except within. It is all there. Though you are called to give up nothing, and in fact, to instead embrace more abundance than ever, there is no amount of money, material possessions, physical relationships, entertainment, etc. that will satiate the hunger to know God in the truest, most intimate sense. While you may still enjoy these things, you will never allow these products of the shadow world, which is the, the what we know as the 3D physical plane, to hinder you on your path. It is the magnum opus and is a truly magical experience that unfolds automatically at exactly the right time for each one of us. I was never a religious or particularly spiritual person in the time before this process began to take place in me consciously. And I did many things that the world would deem to be unworthy of such a gift. But that is the beauty of it. It is a gift, one that is free of condition or limitation and is wrapped entirely in love. So I hope that um, that helps to um, sort of explain the process a little bit more. Um, and if you resonate with this information, um, there is a specific reason for that. Um, so I do highly recommend if you feel drawn to this information, um, I have made a couple of other videos about transfiguration and fusion here on YouTube, and I've written about it again, a lot on my Patreon page. But in addition to that, I really do recommend checking out Neville Goddard's work and Luna Ash as well. She doesn't post much on YouTube these days, but, um, I would recommend checking out her Facebook page. So I hope that that helps, even if it is one person. Um, if there are any questions or commentary, please feel free to drop a line in the comment section. Thank you for listening.